I find when we truly get honest with ourselves, it's not the circumstances or the things that happen to us uh, or that people do to us that causes the greatest amount of upset in our lives. It's actually the, the stories and the perceptions and the judgments that we place around those things. Hi, everyone. I'm Chris Natsky with Black Belt Leadership Speaking and Coaching with your Mind of the Champion Tip of the Week. You know, each and every one of us will always have challenges in our lives. If there's one thing that is a constant, it's going to be change and challenge. And what I find is, is that many times the greatest amount of upset that I have comes from my resistance in those times. You know, I think of probably the two most painful times in my life is number one, when I was a senior in high school and I lost my lost my brother Danny to a drowning accident. And then later on in life, when I went through a divorce after a 26 year relationship and each of those times I I had anger and upset and and uh, and it was there were very, very difficult times in my life. But what I found was is after I went through the grief process is when I started to look back at them and I began to just let go of my judgments around them and do some deep forgiveness work. What I found is in many ways, they were some of the most profound times in my life. They were the times where I was asked to grow the most. They were the times where I learned the most about myself and also the times when I was able to make the greatest impact afterwards with the people that I served. It wasn't something that happened overnight and it wasn't easy. But what I found out is when I let go of the judgments around it and I realized that there were things that I created, I promoted and I allowed in both of those circumstances, then it caused me to look at them differently. And I also was able to look at the gifts that came from each one of those relationships and those happenstances. It reminds me of a story that I've loved for several years. It's about two monks. And these two monks lived high up in the mountains in a monastery. And every five years, two monks were chosen to go down into the city below and go and get supplies and interact with the village people. Now, um, this particular time, these two monks were chosen for this assignment and they were getting ready to go down on their mission. Now, the, the monastery was just a, was loved by the community. They did some amazing work in serving others. But one thing that they did that was a little bit weird is that they were, they were a monastery of only men monks and they were uh, pr uh, forbidden from ever having contact with females of any kind. They couldn't speak to women. They couldn't touch them. They couldn't even look at them. It was just something that their order had, um, had taken on. And so anyway, these two monks are venturing down uh, this beautiful springtime day and they're heading down the mountain and, and it's springtime. And so the mountain snow is beginning to melt. And so the river is moving at a very high pace and they come to the edge of the river that they're going to cross. And what do they see? But a beautiful young woman. And she's standing there with her long flowing hair and her beautiful eyes. But she's also very scared because the river is running so high that she is afraid to cross it herself. So the first monk sees her there and takes a look at the situation and thinks for a moment. And then he goes up and he, he says hello to her. He greets her. He talks to her lightly. And the next thing you know, he's picked her up and placed her on his shoulders and begins to walk across the river to take her to the other side. Well, he deposits her on the other end. She's so delighted that he was there to help. And she gives him a big kiss on the cheek and a big hug, and she goes on her way. Well, the second monk sees this, and he is, he is he's one pissed off monk, right? So he sees this, and he can't believe what he's just seen. He's seen his brother, like, violate every aspect of their order about interacting with women. But he decides not to say anything. So the two monks continue to walk on their way to the village, and a couple of hours have gone by. And the second monk continues to get more angry and more angry and more angry until pretty soon he can't hold it back anymore. And he just blurts out, brother, I can't believe that you had connection with that woman back there. Don't you know that you violated every aspect of our order? And the first monk smiles and pauses and then looks at his brother and he says, my dear friend, I set that woman down two hours ago at the river's edge. You seem to be still holding on to her. So what are you still holding on to? What are the things in your life that have occurred that maybe they hurt you deeply? 
but you decided to continue to hold on to them. And right now it's not serving anymore. In fact, you may not even be aware that it's there, but it's holding you back in some way, shape or form. One of the biggest challenges I had to do is those two examples that I share with you is to be able to process those myself. I'm not saying I've been through them totally. I don't know as if we ever are, but we're always on that journey of letting those things go that don't serve us. And when we do, we're able to open our eyes and our hearts up to things in our world that we can truly make the impact we were designed to make and truly live the life that we were designed to live. So where do you have an opportunity to set something down that's been holding you back? Anyway, that's your assignment for this week, my friends. Thanks so much for listening. And this has been Chris Natsky with Black Belt Leadership Speaking and Coaching, and we'll see you next time on the Mind of a Champion Tip of the Week.